environmental considerations toward a sustainable future. It is early morning on a farm in South America, where a local family has already started their daily chores. Gloria is gathering water for the day's cooking and cleaning, while her father Manuel heads to the fields to continue the season's harvest. Later, he will take his crops to the local market down the road. The profits from these sales help him support his family. This scene looked very different a few years ago. Before a water project, Gloria had to walk over two miles to a contaminated river to collect drinking water. Another project helped the family increase their harvest. Manuel struggled to get his produce to market until the road he used was improved. Part of why the projects in Gloria and Manuel's community were successful is because they considered the environmental impacts of their activities beforehand and took steps to reduce or avoid them. However, some development projects may cause environmental impacts that are unforeseen or not addressed in project design. But shouldn't we be more worried about helping families like this one than conserving the environment? Why should we think about the environmental impacts of development projects? Some people might answer, it's the law. In most countries, that is true. In USAID's case, U.S. Regulation 216 requires an analysis of environmental impacts before any funding goes to support a project. We can make the greatest positive impact by designing sound programs that maximize the limited funds for development work. But these are not the only reasons. The communities we work with rely heavily on their natural environment to provide for their basic needs. Negative environmental impacts cause negative impacts on the community as a whole. A thorough environmental analysis will help ensure your project success by maximizing benefits to local communities. Project design should always adapt to local conditions, and one of the best ways to do this is to involve the local communities affected by the project in the project design. So, the purpose of environmental regulations is not to interfere with development, but rather to encourage sound programs that benefit communities in the long term. I think that as, as a foreign assistance agency, we need to be responsible for how our resources are being used in a way that is um, sensitive to the environment as well as to the people. And so upfront in the design and implementation and as well as the uh, regular monitoring of programs, we need to have environmental considerations upfront and be sure that whatever we do and whatever we support is not uh, affecting the environment negatively. Uh, we have the responsibility for, uh, for the country in which we're working with, the people we're working with, but as well as globally. Now let's take a look at three case studies that show how poor environmental management can lead to project failure, while on the other hand, using environmentally sound strategies helps assure project success. The case studies will address three key development sectors, water and sanitation, road infrastructure, and agriculture. 